Hello friends, welcome back to this video series on saluting women in history. This is the second part of the video series on the Christian women national builders of India. And let us now look into the contributions of those Christian women national builders one by one. Rajkumari Amrit Khaul she was the daughter of the youngest son of the Punjabi Raja of Kapurthala who converted to Christianity and married the daughter of a Bengali missionary. Raised as a Protestant Christian, she entered the Indian independence movement following the Jalin Balabag massacre in 1919. Rajkumari became a close associate of Mahatma Gandhi and became a strong advocate of women's rights, campaigning against the practices of child marriage, Parda and the Devadasi system. She founded the All India Women's Conference in 1927 and was jailed by the British authorities for her participation in the Dandi March. Since 1934, she began to live in Gandhi's ashram, adopting an austere lifestyle that contrasted greatly from the royal luxury she was born into. Rajkumari Amrit Kaur got imprisoned twice during the years 1937 and 1942. She also began to advocate for universal suffrage and served as a chairperson of All India Women's Education Fund Association. For these efforts, Time magazine declared her the Woman of the Year in 1947. After independence, Rajkumari Amritkau became an elected representative and served as Minister of Health for 10 years, during which she led several major public health campaigns to eradicate and limit the spread of malaria and tuberculosis. She also established the All India Institute of Medical Sciences and was also a key founding member of the Indian Council of Child Welfare and chairperson of the Indian Red Cross. Rajkumari Amrit Kaur also served as a member of the Rajya Sabha and held leadership roles in several public health organizations. Dr. Hilda Mary Lazarus Hailing from Andhra Pradesh, Hilda Mary received a medical degree from Madras Medical College and won a gold medal for her outstanding work in midwifery. She received her specialization in obstetrics and gynecology in the UK and joined the Lady Hardinge Medical College in New Delhi, which was the only medical college in India especially for women and open to people of all religions. She dedicated herself to the promotion of women and maternal care and eventually went on to serve as director of Velur Medical College, authoring a book on her experiences as a doctor. In 1961, she received the Padma Shri Award for her contributions to women and maternal care in India and also received the Order of the British Empire and Kesari Hin Gold Medal from the United Kingdom. Annie Mascarin. She was born into a Latin Catholic family in the Travancore Strait of India. She grew up to pursue a double master's in history and economics and after her studies, she moved to Sri Lanka to serve as a lecturer. But after some time, she returned back to India and taught at Maharaja's College of Arts and Law. However, her academic feats aside, she spearheaded the demand for women's representation in the 40s and broke the sexist barrier on many political political fronts. She served as an MLA for the Trivancore Legislative Assembly and she was the first woman to become an MP from Kerala in the first Lok Sabha. She led the fight to integrate Trivancore in the newly independent nation of India. Annie Mascarin secured her position as one of the India's primary independence activists using her strong oratory skills. She was not only instrumental in uplifting her community, but also worked for the empowerment of women. Violet Hari Alva Daughter of an Anglican reverend, she was orphaned at the age of 16 and taken care of by her adult siblings. Eventually, she went to become an English language professor at the Indian Women's University in Bombay. But later, she became the first woman advocate in India to have argued a case before a full high court bench. Violet Alva started a magazine titled Indian Women. She served as a deputy chairperson of the Bombay Municipal Corporation and also as the president of the juvenile court. She got herself involved in several organizations such as YWCA and the Business and Professional Women's Association. Violet Alva became the supporter of the Indian independence movement along with her husband Joshim Alva. Her activities as a freedom fighter eventually led to her imprisonment 
women by British authorities in the Arthur Jail Road. It is important to state here that during this time, she brought her five-month-old baby son to jail with her. Further, she leveraged her experience and ties in the publishing and created the Forum magazine in 1943, which was dedicated to publishing and disseminating pro-independence writings and giving fellow freedom fighters a platform to voice their ideas. After India gained independence, Violet Alva served as a member of parliament and advocated for family planning education and tools expansion to the Indian Navy. She also became the Deputy Minister of State for Home Affairs and then the Deputy Chairperson of the Rajya Sabha. After such a brilliant and dedicated career, she passed away in 1969 and Parliament was adjourned early in her honour. She and her husband were honoured in 2007 with a portrait in Parliament for being the first parliamentarian couple in the history of India. Akkamma Cheryan She was a freedom fighter from the erstwhile Travancore and was popularly known as the Jansi Rani of Travancore by Mahatma Gandhi himself. In February 1938, the Travancore State Congress was formed and Akkamma Cheryan gave up her teaching career and dedicated herself full-time to the cause of Indian freedom struggle. Cheryan led a mass rally to the Gaudiyar Palace demanding an end to the ban on the State Congress and the dropping of charges against its leaders. This eventually led to a standoff during which a British police chief ordered his men to prepare to fire on the 20,000 marchers assembled. Cheryan intervened and uttered the now famous lines. I am the leader. Shoot me first before you kill others. Her courageous words forced the police authorities to withdraw their orders. Akkama Cheryan also founded the Desa Sevika Sangh, which was an all-women volunteer group meant to increase women's involvement in the Indian independence movement. Her dedication to the cause led her to being imprisoned twice by the British officials. Following independence, Akama Cheryan served in the Travancore Legislative Assembly and she is memorialized with a statue and park in Trivandrum, Kerala. Rosamma Punus Hailing from Kerala, she was an Indian independence activist, politician and lawyer. She was one of the first women leaders of the Communist Party who left an indelible mark on the trade union movement in Kerala. Rosamma was the younger sister of the legendary freedom fighter Akama Cheryan and was initiated into the Congress Party in 1938. But Rosamma later got drawn towards the communist movement and she won the Devikulam seat in Idukki district in 1957 as a Communist Party of India candidate. Under the tutelage of her fiery nationalist sister Akama Cheryan, Rosamma was bold enough to challenge the conventions and orthodoxy. Rosamma was also an eminent lawyer and mostly took up the cases of workers and fought for their rights. She served as the president of Kerala Mahila Sangam for 10 years, president of Plantation Corporation and the State Housing Board. She has also held the distinction as the first member to take oath in the Kerala Assembly in 1957 and the first pro tem speaker. Rosamma, along with her husband, holds record as the first couple to get elected simultaneously to the Assembly and the Parliament. Naidanwa Angami She is an Indian social worker from the northeastern state of Nagaland and founded the Naga Mothers Association in 1984 in order to address the growing public health challenges of alcoholism and drug abuse that were facing the Naga people. She organized women across the Naga tribes with the common goal of addressing the issues of addictions and the social ills rise out of it, such as domestic violence, crime, family breakdown and the transmission of HIV. In addition, the shelters and rehabilitation centers were established for the addicts along with the clinic and hospice center for people with HIV. Naidanwa Angami also began the Shed No More Blood campaign which sought to promote national unity and end separatist violence in the state by encouraging insurgents to drop their weapons and join the mainstream politics. Her social activism and contributions to peace and national unity have led her to be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2005 and she received the Padma Shri Award in 2000. We have come to the end of the list. 
the participation of the indian christians in the freedom struggle and nation building is often questioned by many of the countrymen mainly because of the notion that the church had a close link with the colonial state when the christians realized that the british were exploiting them for their own benefit they started participating in national movements and when the british prevented them from actively participating in the nationalist struggle they formed their own associations in order to foster nationalism and contributed significantly towards the process of nation building as i said before various prominent christian leaders from different regions of india took active part in the national women indian christian women also played a prominent role and what is significant in all these christian women was that they came to the forefront of the freedom struggle at a time when indian women were largely confined to their homes besides the leading individuals the church in india ushered in the modernity of the indian people The Christian community surely has its role in the creation of true modern Indians, the builders of new India with an outlook of rationality and humanism. They are actively involved in several grassroots movements, civil society and non-governmental organizations and the service of the church needs to be appreciated to a greater extent. Thus we can conclude that the Indian Christians not only helped India to attain freedom but contributed significantly in all aspects of the society and recorded a benchmark in the process of nation building with all these facts highlighted the Indian Christian women or the people who have to be given a big salute in history thank you for watching and i will see you all in the next video with another important topic Please like, share and subscribe to this channel.